Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Uh, yeah, we're going to get started. Mike's trying to get his work, and he's in the other room trying to get his going and everything. But, uh, okay. you know, so some pretty interesting things, you know, we've been seeing going on in the news and all that. And, we, you know, we try to discuss it, you know, every time we get together. And that's what we're wanting to do here tonight. And it's not to, we've said it many times, is not to scare people, but to prepare them for what's exactly. coming. And, and you know, you know, I think, you know, it tells us we're setting our self, assembling ourselves together, uh, you know, but it, it's about the edification, to edify one another as we see that day approaching. Yes. You know, a lot of people give the first part of that scripture, but they forget about the last part of it. This is about us edifying. You know, I was sharing with someone today and we were talking about, and I said, it's not to scare you, it's to prepare you for what's coming. And that's what we want to talk about is, you know, are people in the word are they reading the word to edify them to encourage them during this time because we're having some very frightful things coming on the earth we're seeing it all around us school shootings and you know tornadoes and earthquakes and fires and and all these others a lot of people have been contacting us and talking to us about what on earth you know what's going on here and you know we're like these are things we have spent brother ricky brother mike we've spent well, we have over 20 years. We've been with you since 2010. So what, 12 years with you, we have done nothing but preach and share the gospel and told these people over and over again, our listeners, this is what's coming. These things exactly. are coming. And, and we've got to get paired. I'm not talking about a church building. I'm talking about the body of Christ. Right. Being That's prepared. the church. Yes, the church. Being prepared for what is to come. Because you know what? It's like this way, Brother Ricky. We have outside our house, not far from here, we have a, a siren that goes off in case of a tornado because we're in Oklahoma. Right. And it talks about in the Bible. It makes me think about it if I hear the siren. Is It talks about in the Bible about if the trumpet makes a, um, what's that word you got to help me with this? Uh, unusual Unsound. sound. How, yeah, how would we know to get ready? Yeah. How would we know to be prepared? And Jesus gave us a list in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, of signs of his coming and told us exactly. the events that was going to happen and what was including the Antichrist and, and other things that we know about, he's warned us about. And we know the sound because we see these things coming. We're not afraid of them because we've already been prepared by reading the word of God. Exactly. Knowing these things are coming. What do you think? Oh, definitely. Um, if if I may go right quick, um, you know, uh, you mentioned Matthew 24, and you know, um, the disciples went out and they uh, said, "Look at all these buildings." You know, they were showing the Lord the buildings. You know, we were amazed about it. Mm -hmm. But the Lord said, "You see all these buildings? Mm -hmm. There's not going to be one stone left upon another." And and. Uh, the disciples said, well, tell us about this time. Tell us about this end. And uh, if I could just read a couple of verses real quick. It, Jesus said in um, 24 and 4, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. Now catch what verse 8 says real closely. These are the beginning of sorrow. The very beginning of them. Yes. So even the things that we're seeing now, we're actually seeing the beginning of them. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, just one second. Check. Mike, did you get back in? I'm trying to. It shows you're still watching. It says you're watching us. I'm trying to watch it. Yeah, it says that if you when you come in, you can actually uh, you can actually uh, request to come in on live too. If not, then I'll hand you my deal and you can go that way, okay? All right. But yes, brother, I mean, exactly. That's what we're talking about here. See, you know, 
you know, this is why in, in the group that we have here, and we've done this since, since we've been, you know, having PT and radio and everything, is we always stick with the King James. And the reason why we stick with King James is because if you're reading one translation, I'm reading another, and Mike's reading another, and so is those reading another, isn't that going to cause confusion? Well, and sure God's, is going to cause And God's not the author of confusion. And that's why, you know, we're like, we do this, we all stick with the same doctrine here, and that way when we come together, guess what? We are both, we're all reading the same thing. And so that's so important when, when, when we study the Word of God. We study from the same Word of God, and that way people are like, huh, what are they talking about? You, you know, because I talked with a friend today, it was today or yesterday, I can't remember. And I was like, well, if we all sit down and each one of us have a different doctrine, how are we going to understand what's being said to us? We look in our book, it doesn't say that. Look in theirs, it doesn't say that. And everybody's got something different. It causes confusion. And we don't want to cause any confusion. We want everybody to understand that we're reading all from the same Word of God and, and we're, we're teaching from the same Word of God. And we're, this is what it's all about, really. You know, I, it's been this way since it started back in 99. And we're wanting to point people to Jesus and to his Word. We're not asking you to take our word for it. No. We're asking you to take his word for it on what he said. You know, Brother Ricky here was just reading about, about uh, um, you know, Matthew 24. You can find it and also in, in uh, let me get it right here, Matthew, uh, Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. You can see what it, what it says right there. All the, They're all saying the same thing. They're warning us. That's what the prophets did in the Old Testament. They were warned. They, they were fit to warn of things to come, right? And Jesus right. said they all wrote concerning him, so they're all writing concerning Christ's coming, right? Amen. And, and you know, Jesus would not be a true God if he didn't warn us. Exactly, I mean, amen, I, I agree. I mean, uh, you know, and, and him, being, him being, being the father, he he's not you know a, a true father won't won't mislead his children. They will not let their children walk into circumstances that they don't understand. And that, and that's the love of Jesus Christ that we have today. He's a true God. He's a wonderful God, and he's full of compassion. Amen. Amen. I'm still here. I'm my deal fell down here. I'm trying to straighten it out again. Um, Exactly, because, you know, the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, it's like I, I told, I told, uh, well, it's a friend of mine, I told her, I was talking to her, and I was like, you know, it's like this way, if you were out there swimming, and you saw your child drowning, you wouldn't just wave at him and say, I love you, you're going to do everything you can to do to save them, Right? You're going to save them. And, and, you know, that's what people need to understand here is that, you know, we have such a loving God. He wants to save us. We're not ignorant of these things. He, he told us what was going to happen so we wouldn't be ignorant but prepared. You know, they had the prophecies of the Old Testament when he came the first time. And he said, come into his own, and his own knew him not. Yeah. Right? Are we going to be ignorant where we do not? Be prepared for his second coming, which is his only coming, last coming, when he comes to judge and put everything in order that we have talked about thousands upon thousands of times studying the word of God and sharing the truth about what's coming. And that, I think, is, is a problem that we're seeing going on here. Many have closed the book. I, I was looking at a deal that was saying that only 85% of Christians in the world today actually read the Bible. And I thought, wow. Yeah. If I'm, the, if I'm, we talked about this, me, you and Mike talked about this, I think it was yesterday. If we're going to be judged by the Word of God, shouldn't we know what the Word of God says? We better know what it says. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's what we're, we're trying to push people to do. Get into the Word and let the Word of God get into you. You don't know if, if your preacher, pastor, or, or whoever you're listening to on TV or, or, or by internet, is telling you the truth if you don't have the Word of God in you. You're, you don't know what they're preaching. You don't know what they're saying. So exactly. if you have the Word in you, then guess what? You're going to know immediately, hey, Jesus said that or Jesus did not say that. 
You know what I'm saying? That's why it's so important to get into the Word of God, to stay into the Word of God, to trust the Word of God, because I think that we spend too much time listening uh, to other people and reading more books about the Bible than we do the Bible itself. Exactly. And one of the things that we're seeing is, you know, um, and, and we're saying this, now is the time to get in. Now is the time to, to get into the Word of God. Because if you're caught in the tribulation period, um, and you take that mark, there's no hope for you. Because the Jesus that's trying to save us now, the, the, the salvation plan he has for us now to take, if we neglect it, there's going to come a day of judgment in which he's not going to be the Savior then. He's going to be the judge. And that's why I believe the book of Isaiah says uh, that the day of the Lord comes as a day of wrath. I believe that's in Isaiah. But, but anyhow, the day of the Lord is like a day of wrath. And, and see, he comes first in the flesh. But the next time he comes, he's going to come as the Almighty. He's going to be the uh, in, in all that full glory and no flesh. Exactly. Hey, Brother Jeremiah, God bless you. Jeremiah is listening. You remember Jeremiah? Yeah, he says you got to read the book. That's right. You got to read the book. God's book. And that's what's so important so you're not deceived by these things. And, and you know, you were talking about it being, the day of the Lord being, being God's wrath. It tells us it's, it's a dreadful and terrible day of the Lord. It talks about the prophets prophesied about. Why? Because it's when he judges the earth when he comes. He's going to judge the earth. And that's what people don't understand. And they're waiting for a rapture to come and rescue them. And, you know, we, we were reading last night, I, I shared the scripture about what I found looking in the book of Acts, chapter 2, about how it tells us that David has not ascended up into heaven, the heavens. And I was like, wow, wait a minute. You know, I mean, we're, we, I think sometimes we're putting the cart before the horse. We need to wait on the events that Jesus told us was coming that's going to happen, that's going to take place. And, and then, you know, we know it because we've studied the Word of God and we continue to study the Word of God. We don't know everything, but we know the one who does. I want to make that very clear. We don't, we don't know everything at all. But we continue to study that word. We continue to search those scriptures because we know that's where the truth is. That's what we got to trust in. That's where our foundation is in the word of God because that word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we got to understand how important the word of God is. And that's what's so, um, I think, deceptive is that I'm hearing people, people have literally told us we've shared the gospel with them, we've shared the word with them, and they're like, oh, I don't believe that book. And But I'm a Christian. No, 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 I'm sorry, but if you're a Christian, you're going to believe the word of God. That it yeah. has to be in you, and it needs to be in you richly. You know, you know, I, I sit and I look in scripture, and I see where it talks about, you know, heaven and earth shall pass away, but he says, my word shall never pass away. When I heard that, and I, I read that, and I heard it. I'm talking about I heard it from my heart. I knew how important the Word of God needed to be, how important the Word of God is that I better know the Word. That's His voice. That's His will is the Word of God. You know, that is, everybody tells me, well, I wish I could hear God's voice. Read His Word. You'll hear His voice. Read His Word. And how important His Word is, then you won't be deceived by the devil's devices. We're not ignorant of his devices because we have the word of God that warned us of these things, that's preparing us of these things, that knows that this is, the, you know, he's prepared. God loves, you know what, we're, we're, we're all parents, we're grandparents, you know, we're getting older now, you know, and, and do we not give our children, our grandchildren instructions? Why? for their protection, to prepare them, to get them ready. Whatever it may be, we give them instruction. God has given us instructions, and it's up to us if we're going to follow them or not as his children. Are we going to follow them? Are we going to listen? Are we going to keep listening to the false teachers and preachers that is telling us, oh, you're going to be raptured out of here. Don't worry about it. I don't know how many times I've heard that. Don't you worry about it. You're going to be out of here. The book of Revelation isn't even for the churches. Well, then why was the book of Revelations written unto the churches? Jesus told John to give it unto the churches. 
Yes. And, and and that's why that's that you know it from Genesis from the word in to the book of Revelation where it says Amen. Mm -hmm. The very end. Every mm -hmm. bit of that was meant for us. We've mm -hmm. even heard people say, Oh, the old testament is not meant for us. I beg your pardon. The yeah. the, the old testament and the new testament, it's not a divider. It's an ongoing word of God. You right. know, we're, we're, we're under grace now. I understand that. But the, the word of God, uh, you know, Jesus told, told us very specifically when he talked to the Pharisees how important the whole word of God is. It's very important that we understand the five books of Moses. Why? Because Moses wrote of Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's 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 brother. That's exactly what Jesus said. Jesus said that the books of Moses, the Psalms, and all other prophets wrote concerning me. Hello. Yeah. And that's why we tell people that's the whole Old Testament right there. That is the whole Old Testament. The first five books of the Book of Moses, the rest are prophets, and then David wrote part of Psalms, right? And you go yep. and you look at that and you see what's going on. Jesus is trying to tell you who he is. When he said in the beginning, God created. That was Jesus. Jesus said all things were created by him and nothing was created without him. That's right. And that's why it's so important to get into those scriptures, you know, and let that word get into you. You know, that's something I just see so desperate because, you know, the Lord said he was going to send a famine in land. And he said it wasn't going to be a famine of bread, right. a famine of, 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 of thirst for water, but it's going to be hearing the words of the Lord. That's the famine we're seeing right now. You know, we talk to a lot of people, and I know you do too. There you know, do, do, do you hear me? Do, do, do you spend time with Jesus? You know, I told someone today, I think it was, it might have been yesterday, but you know, is. Word. And you know, it's kind of like you got to just hang on to. It's a love letter. It's a letter to us. And you know, we got to get that word, and we got to have that word in our hearts. Because I don't know how much longer we're going to have the physical Bible. You know, because they're trying to eliminate it so quickly. But we better have it in our hearts. That's the place we can hide it. That's how Jesus gets into our hearts by His word. He told us. What did He tell them when they wanted to kill Him? You know, he said, he told him, before, I know he told him before Abraham was I am, but he said that, you know, if you were, of, of, if, if Abraham was your father, you wouldn't seek to kill me. He said, my words are not in you. That's why. You don't have my word because if you had my word, you wouldn't seek to kill me. Right? Right. You know, um, when he said before Abraham was I am, what was he trying to tell them? That's why it's so important, you know, that for us not to be ignorant of these things. There's no reason for us to perish by the very gospel that can save our lives. Right? I agree with that 100%. Yeah, that's because, just, you know, Go ahead. Well, well, where we stand at today is like you said. Look, look at what, look at what the government has already done. Mm -hmm. I mean, they what they have already done. Number one, we all know back in the sixties, prayer was taken out of schools. Mm -hmm. uh, the teachers weren't even allowed to, you know, let somebody read a scripture or anything like that. That's not allowed. Mm -hmm. uh, here we are now in the 70s, uh, in the 70s and 80s, uh, here come humanism, where people neglected God but said that, you know, the humans are it. The humans were God, you know. Then the 90s came, and then uh, the, it brought in a movement that was so terrible that it was an entertaining spirit. It's not a spirit about, you know, worshiping God. It's uh, entertainment. Even the songs, they got to where they could copyright out the songs to make money. And this is a, a fulfillment of the scripture about in the last days they shall make merchandise of you. 
Mm -hmm. And now what we got now in this in this time period right now, uh, babies are being murdered every day, unborn babies. Uh, people's people's killing each other. Mm -hmm. It's a sad situation. So it what's bound to be and, and think about this. They're already taking history, the United States history, out of the history books. Mm -hmm. Do away with it. Of course, that's what a lot of them's done with the Word of God. They took it out of the history books, and people say, "Well, where's the proof of it?" They're going to do the same thing. They're doing the same thing now with the Confederate. They're taking it out of the history books. What's going to be next? It's going to be a move by the Antichrist and the government, and it might be a move before the Antichrist gets here. That the Bible, the Word of God, is a hate book, and it's going to be banned. So you're right. We need a treasure while we have it. Yeah, because you know, you know, you know, it, it, you know, we got to keep those. Um, we talked about it before. Now, y'all, y'all, y'all know that I, I had my, I had my stroke, and I go through, you know, my neurology problems I've had and all that. So, I, if I don't get the scripture just quite, quite right, understand why I'm trying my best here. But you know, I, I know that we're supposed to, to keep our lamps full. You know, of oil, keep them lamps trimmed, keep that wick trimmed, keep it burning. Don't let it go out. This ain't the time to sleep and slumber. This isn't the time to get comfortable where we're at. You know, this is the time to to let our our lamps get dry. You know, we got to keep it filled. And, you know, it, it's the word of God. And I believe it says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Is that correct? Yes. Um, and that's why it's so important. And every time you go into the Word of God, and you allow that Word of God in you, it relights, it rekindles that fire in you. It rekindles that Word in you, and it makes it alive, and it fills you up, and you're able to overflow and go share it. But sometimes we forget. You know, Mike and I was talking the other day to someone, and, and, and I said, you know, it's like this. You know, we get that gas tank mike likes to whenever we get our gas tank empty not empty but half full he likes to keep gas put in it all the time he don't let it get empty and that's what exactly. we need to do you know we feed our flesh three times a day how often do we feed our souls the word of god how often do we grab our knife and fork and dig into the table of god and eat his word you know how many times a day do we do that how much time do we spend in the word of god how much time do we do because you know it, it, it's going to go out it's going to you know you if you if you start starving you're starving your spirit and that's what people Amen. don't seem to understand you're an empty shell. You're, you're starving your spirit. You wouldn't starve your flesh. So why are you starving your spirit? Feed the spirit is what we need to do. And we do that with the word of God and being taught by his spirit and allowing Jesus. Jesus said, if we have the anointing, which is truth, not a lie, we need not any man to teach us. He wants exactly. to teach us. He wants to give us his word. He wants us to, to not only have it in us, but share it with others. You know, this is a time we should be standing up as the body of Christ, the true church, standing up and going into the streets, going into the highways and the byways, as Mike's talked about many times, the highways and byways in the book of Isaiah, you know, and how we need to go to the highways and the byways and bid them to come so that his table is filled, you know? And that's what he's wanting us to do, and, and, and that's what we try to share so much is that, you know, I think sometimes we can spend too much time filling buildings. The building, the true building, the Lord said that he dwelled not in, the, in buildings made by the temples made by the hands of men. He mm -hmm. chose to dwell in us. And he said, I go to prepare a place for you. We need to be filling the kingdom. The kingdom. That's our job. That's what he left us here to do is to fill the kingdom. And, and sometimes I think we neglect the kingdom. You know, when we make excuses, you know, it talks about in the Bible. One will say, oh, well, I married a wife. And other said, you know, I bought some land. Please forgive me if I'm not getting the scriptures just right or correct me. I have no problem with correction. No I, problem. I, I, but, but, you know, the fact of the matter is, is that the excuses have ran out. It's time. It's time to fill the kingdom. It's time to be preaching the gospel like we've never preached it before. 
It's time everywhere you go. I don't care if it's in a supermarket. I don't care if it's in a laundromat. I don't care if it's on the street corner. I don't care if it's on the telephone, on the internet, wherever God has you. We need to be sharing the gospel. We need to be sharing the word of God because that's the only thing that's going to endure. Because it, it, everything's going to pass away. He said, heaven and earth pass away. But my word shall never, never, never pass away. That tells you something. Let that ring in your ears. Get that into your heart of how important it is to have the word of God. Because you know what? If we don't, our oil is going to run out. And we're going to end up being like, remember, there was ten wise. Five were wise and five were foolish. Remember of the virgins. Five wise, five foolish. Because why? They let their lamps go out. You, you know, and, and, and Paul talked about, too, Paul talked about a, a falling away first. And we're seeing many fall away. I don't know how many I've heard. Well, I don't know if it's Jesus or not anymore, I believe in. But I believe there's a God. And I said, you don't believe in Jesus? No. And I said, what about the Bible? No, I don't believe the Bible either. And I'm like, Jesus is the only way. We're seeing many, 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 and that's one of the signs, too, that there's going to be a falling away. Yeah, and, and we're seeing that. Um, it, it's a, You know, people are talking about a great revival. They, they mm -hmm. talk about that. They bring that up. Yeah. But if we understand the Word of God correctly, it says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be the end date. Mm -hmm. And he also said that narrows the way that leads to salvation. Mm -hmm. And few are going to be there that find it. You know? Yes. Yeah. You know, you know, maybe you think of, I always say it, and I still believe in my heart, you know. I think one of the saddest scriptures um, that I read is when Jesus says, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find any faith on the earth? It makes me pause. And think, wow, you know, very few be that find it. You know, is there going to be any faith on the earth when he comes? Is there anyone still going to be saying, hey, Jesus, I'm, you know, you know what I'm saying? Is it, it it's just so sad when you stop and you think about it and you see these things and you read the word of God and you, you know, it, it's, it's a day that people just don't understand that day, that day of judgment of what's going to come. And you know what's so sad is we can avoid that. Yeah, we can avoid that. We really can through Christ. That's why he came. That's why he died. That's why he resurrected. That's why he shed that blood. He said, I go to prepare a place for where I am, that you should be there also. That's why he done that for us. And, you know, and so many people don't want to hear. It. They don't have time for it. They don't want to get into the word of God. They don't want to you know, and, and we, you know, we're not judging anyone. We're speaking to ourselves as well, too. I die daily. I die daily. You know, this is a, something that's not a one-time thing. We die daily to our flesh, to our sins. You know, and, and that's why it's so important to have that word. That word is like putting a, you know, the scripture talks, about, I believe it was Paul, talking about taking the word of God. It's like putting a mirror before you. But when you walk away from that mirror, you forget what matter of man or woman you have become. The word of God puts you in check. The word of God makes you check your own self. It makes you makes you look at yourself because you can lie to everybody else, but you can't lie to God and you can't lie to yourself. You try to, right. but you can't lie to God at all. And that word puts a mirror in front of you and makes you take a deep look at yourself and say, am I clean? You know, I, I believe it was David that said, test me and try me, oh God, see if there's any wickedness in me. Well, that's a powerful scripture when you think about it. Yes. And, you, mm -hmm. and like you said, the Apostle Paul said he died daily. Yep. Yeah. You know? And yeah. and that's what we got to do. We got to keep this flesh crucified that the Spirit of God, in other words, you, you know, John the Baptist, he, he mentioned a he mentioned a twofold meaning to this. And I'm not trying to bring something out of context here. But if you remember, John the Baptist said he must increase and I must decrease. Mm -hmm. That's what we got to do. We got to decrease ourselves that God can be magnified. Yes. 
Yeah, Paul even and, said that, you know, we suffer in our flesh so that God can be glorified. You know, Paul talked about all the things he went through and, and the cares of all the churches. But, you know, Paul took those things gladly. Remember, it was a Peter, and I can't remember who the other one was. They worshiped God that they were being persecuted. They gave glory to Jesus that they were found worthy to be persecuted for his namesake. You know, are we doing that? Or what do we I'm sorry, but we ain't seen persecution yet. Not yet. No, you know, people want to say, oh, well, you know, I go through persecution. No, 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 no. I'm talking about being thrown in a prison left to die. I'm talking about being thrown in a dungeon or something and, and facing beheaded or crucified like they did. All the things they went through, you know, uh, you know, uh, being thrown in a lion's den like Daniel. I'm talking about some, is your faith that strong, you know? that you're going to trust God being thrown into the fire, like uh, like uh, Meshach and who are the Meshach, uh, Bendigo, you know what I'm talking about, the three yeah. Hebrew. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? We haven't seen persecution. We ain't seen persecution of people being killed and murdered and, and just thrown in the streets. And, you know, I'm, I'm talking, you know, we've been seeing, you know, on the news, let's get real with it, people. I mean, they're actually just digging a ditch and throwing the bodies in there and coming up with dirt. And then later on, the family comes in and tries to find their loved one in the mess. Yeah. We haven't that, seen persecution yet. No. No. Not at all. No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No, and so, uh, the, the thing that we're seeing is, it's coming to that. Amen. Yeah. I mean, the persecution, I mean, if we just look at the recent events uh, that happened down in Texas, and and we see how uh, everything that I saw in the last few days um, transpiring right after that, you have a president who is supposed to be the leader of our country and he you know if it was 19 abortions it would not have not even made the news you know what I'm saying That's so, right. so it wouldn't have made the news you know and so I saw a news reporter going through the hallways of the United States Capitol building, trying to get one of the senators or the congressmen to answer a question. You know, what are you going to do about this? What are you going to do about this? And one of the senators was our own senator from here, from Oklahoma, who's supposed to be a Christian man, okay? But so, and I think a lot of how, well, he should have stopped and he should have answered. Because he should have had a, he should have had an answer to a question. He should have been prepared, you know, uh, and he should have gave a godly answer, you know. Exactly. But he didn't because yeah. you know why? Because uh, just in scripture alone, okay. And you think about this. You know why they don't answer with scripture? You know why they don't answer? Uh, and 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 I bet you about ninety nine point nine percent of our congressmen and our senators all claim to be Christian mm -hmm. of some sort of religion. Okay, so you think about this for one second. So now think about this, okay, in uh, Scripture, in Romans 8, he, they said, now there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. If they were walking in the spirit, they would have gave an answer. Okay? He would have, he would have stopped and said, you know what? It was the devil. We're, we're, we've, gave, we've gave our country uh, to Satan. Yeah. Okay? He would have missed in high places. He, he, could, he could have just said flat out, mm -hmm. it's the devil. That's all just pure of the devil right there. You know, abortion is of the devil. You know? We could, he should have just started naming every sin out there in the world. Lust of the flesh is of the devil. You know what? All this stuff, it's going to put enmity between man and God. 
you know, the carnal mind. So if you jump down in Romans 8, he talks about the law, and then he goes here in chapter or verse 5, he says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then if, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. None of them will please God because they are afraid of losing their, their uh, status, position. Yeah. their position mm -hmm. in Congress. That's why when you have a Christian man, a true Christian man or a Christian woman, who runs for office and gets there, you know, most of them are one term, and that's it. Yep. So you get you get these long-term people in there. Mitch McConnell, who's been a leader in Kentucky, claims to be claims to be a god. Nancy Pelosi claims to be a god. Chuck Schumer claims to be a god. Joe Biden claims to be a god. And the list can go on and on and on and on and on. Yeah, but you know what, though, and too, is, is that's part of, uh, though I think that's part of where it talks about wickedness in high places. Yeah, absolutely. So because they are carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither, to, neither indeed can be. I did not say that. God says that in his word, Romans 8. So... You think about that. If that was 19 children who were aborted yes, or the other day, it would, not, it would have not even been on the news. He wouldn't have cut his trip short to Asia. He wouldn't have been on the news. And he would have just, it wouldn't have been nothing. Because there's, we're, we're already in uh, triple digits or six-figure digits in the uh, uh, abortion count. So, you know, and that, and, and so, you know, we want to, you know, sure, it's sad, but you know what? So was Sandy Hook. So was the next school shooting and the movie theater shooting and this shooting and that shooting. And when's the next shooting going to be? I'm sorry, but you know what? I'm not going to apologize because, you know, the Word of God is our weapon. It's, all these other weapons are carnal. I can, we cannot, a gun will never, I'm sorry, you probably didn't friend me now because <laughs> there is no gun on planet Earth that's going to save your life. That's right. It will kill, and right now this devil is using the guns to kill, steal, and destroy. You know? So he's using he's using political issues to kill, steal, and destroy. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And he's doing it right in front of our eyes until we have somebody that says, stands up and says, wait a second, we have an enemy who hates humanity. Because hell is not created for humanity. But you know what? Hell was created for Satan and his demons, his angels, the fallen angels. Mm -hmm. But you know what? We're just we're being sucked right into that loophole. So we will have so we'll be judged, you know, if we don't get right, we're gonna be judged on that second you know, that comes, second yeah. death. You know? So it, it it's it's really staggering, you know, that we're we come in contact with people day in and day out, you know. Ren talks to people constantly. Ricky, you've been talking to a lot of people. You know, you, you, you're, I talk to a lot of people, and, and we try not to be uh, politicizing it and not to over, uh, you know, too preachy, but be a light in the darkness. Because, you know, we got... We're in a, a we're in a feelings 
a feeling society. People are feeling their feelings, their emotion, they're high charged emotionally and and you know we can actually be at the point to where it's like society is like looking at that as hate speech as as Ren was talking about as as you were talking about Ricky that the you know if we preach too much it could be hate speech mm -hmm. you know well but yeah the, but you know one thing about it though that should not stop us from preaching and that's what you know I think what you're talking about there is a lot of them say they're Christians but they're afraid to go any further than that the fear you know they're fear they're fearful they don't want to lose their sort of position. They don't want to lose their jobs. They want to lose their maybe spouses, their children, their grandchildren, mm -hmm. things like that, because they're afraid they're going to offend somebody. But it warns us, it tells us the word of God that there's something that's going to be offended. Mm -hmm. It will offend some. It said that very clearly in Scripture. And, you know, too, you know, the wickedness in high places. I think I do, if you have the word of God, listen to what they say. Most of them you'll find they'll contradict yourself, they'll become double-minded, double-tongued, lukewarm, you know, things that we're warned about in the Bible. But but the important thing is this, is that we need to make sure that we're not following them, that we're following him, Jesus. Yeah. And we're listening to Jesus. You know, sometimes you got to tune all that out, and you got to say, wait a minute, that's not what Jesus said, and you got to put that hand up and say, no, nope, not listening to that, that's not of God. You know, and that's something that I think is very important. You know, we put, you know, scriptures together with things we're seeing happening in the news to let them know, hey, Jesus talked about that. And look what's happened. Days of Noah, the days of Lot, all these things we're talking about, you know. And, you know, I, I hear people say, oh, well, so-and-so is such a Christian man. He's such a Christian man. And, I, and I'm thinking to myself, well, brother, sister, if you think he's such a Christian man, then why is he talking the word of God? Yeah. Why is he, you know, and that's something, but see, we don't know that unless we are in the word of God and we stay in the word of God daily, night and day, not our lamps go out, you know, keep that lit so that we exactly. know if someone comes along with some false doctrines like, oh, that's not it. That's not what Jesus said. I don't care if you're sitting in a political seat, a political, you know, uh, place, or you're sitting in a, Judge's seat, I don't care if you're sitting in church or where you're at, you know, you need to hold it up to the light of God's word and what God said. Because that, isn't that not what Satan did in the garden? That's what he did with a lie. He took God's word and turned it into a lie. He had one word. Now, we talked about this many, many times, y'all. Many times we have talked about this in chat. But he said, Thou shalt not surely die after God told him that yeah. they're going to die. He said, thou shalt not. He added one word, not, N-O-T. Mm -hmm. And look what happened. One word. Mm -hmm. That's why we're not yep. to add to or take away from the word of God. And if that happened to the whole earth because of one word, we better be very careful with God's word. We better be very careful with God's word. I understand why it's a two-edged sword. I understand, you know, he's warning. You know, people act like Satan don't know the word of God. Well, of course he knows the word of God. He knows the word. Better than we do, probably. Mm -hmm. He's the one that went before, he would go before God to, to uh, be the accuser of the brethren. Sure. Right? Yep. He knows the word. And, and this is what you got to understand. He gets cast here to the earth. He's angry. He's upset. He's mad. He's furious. Because he can no longer, that's why it says, woe unto the havers of, of, of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, the great tribulation. Right there, Jesus said in the world, you shall have tribulation. I believe Jesus' word over anybody else's. That's why we got to stand firm in his word. It's time to stand up, stand our foundation being Jesus Christ, the seal of God. We talked about that on, on the phone, I think, the other day. The Father's name, Jesus Christ, Jesus who is the Christ, that is the seal that we must have in order to, uh, it, it will, uh, what's the word? It will um, seal us to redemption. That's it, seal us. Thank you, brother. Mm -hmm. Seal us to the day of redemption. Praise God. That's the day Christ comes, the day of redemption, the day of the resurrection. That's going to happen right then. We want to be still. We must be still with his name. We can't be going in all these different directions, all these different names. 
No, only one name given under heaven whereby we must be saved, and that name is Jesus. And that's what we got to preach him, Jesus and him crucified. So people can really come into, you know, I'm seeing drive-by prayers and drive-by, you know. You know, I've had people come to me and say, well, you know, my pastor says this, my pastor says that. And I'm like, well, what about what Jesus said? When is that going to be important, what Jesus said? That's more important than what you say, what I say, what Mike says, what any pastor, preacher, whatever they think they are says. Even the president of the United States said, what does Jesus say? And most of them don't know. And that's why it's so important. No, they don't. They don't know. Go ahead, Ricky. <laughs> and and here's, here's the situation. They, they, they don't know because they never read the book. Right. Well, they read the book all right, but it wasn't the Word of God. Yeah. And this is where they go astray at. And, um, you know, um, the, the thing that about it is, when the Word, the Bible speaks of letting the Word abide in us. You know, they, they we're quick to quote promises, but a lot of them promises come with the condition that His Word must abide in us. And I don't mean just knowing it up here. That right. means it being your drive, being your 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 love. Yeah. Have it, abiding in it. Being a doer of it. Yeah. Not just a hearer only, but a doer of the word. You know, I, I you know I have people say, Yeah, I've read the Bible. Okay, but do you do the Bible? Do you do what it says? Do, do you do it? You know, it's not a, it's not a book that you can just you know, I recommend people to read it. I, I told someone today, they said, where do you think I'll start? Yeah, I told them to start Matthew, go all the way to Revelations. I said, when you get done with that, I said, you're going to know, understand some of it. Some of you probably won't understand. Then go back and read the New Testament. Start with Genesis. And when you get done reading the, 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 the New Testament, and you see where Jesus said they all wrote concerning me, like we were talking about a while ago, you go back and read that, and you're going to realize in the beginning, God, that's Jesus. And you're going to see God in every chapter, every book, you're going to see Jesus and yes. realize that's who he is. you got to know, how can you come to who you don't know? You can't. you got to know who he, who he is. And, and that's what a lot of people do not understand. And, you know, I'm not saying, like, again, we don't know it all. We do not. But praise God, we know the one who does. We know where to go and look. And that's in his word. And that's what's the most important thing. If I could tell, if I tell anyone to store up anything, I tell them to store up his word. Store his word up in your heart. That's the only thing. Mm -hmm. You stop and you think about it. Go put yourself in a, go, go, Ricky, get out and go stand in the closet. No, nothing in there but you. You'd go crazy after a while, right? Yeah. But if you have his word in your heart, you have his word. That's how Paul was able to get through writing most of the New Testament in prison. You know, he had the word. He heard the word. He believed the word. That's why Moses, when he'd go up 40, 40 days and 40 nights up into the mountain of God, he heard the voice of God. He spoke to God. He, he was called a friend of God. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, that's what, you know, is Jesus your friend? You know, do, do you know him like that? Do you know him that you're not afraid no matter what, even if you die, to look upon him? Because Moses wasn't afraid. No, was he? No, he wasn't afraid to look upon him. You know, and that's what that's what we got to understand here is, you know, hey, you know, been blessed. You know, maybe you've got a wife, maybe you don't, maybe you got a husband, maybe you don't. But that don't necessarily mean you're going to end up being thrown in together. You may be there all by yourself, but I guarantee you one thing, I'd want Jesus there with me. You better have Jesus there with you when you find yourself in that place, because I'm telling you, uh, you ain't going to make it if you don't have him and his word. And you know what? I, I, I remember in, in, in scripture where, where I think it's Paul and Silas, didn't they sing unto the Lord and the chains broke off from them? Sure did. You know, you know, do you have a song in your heart? Do you have the word in his heart? Do you, you know, are you praising just with your lips or, or are you praising him with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your might, you know? You know, the word of God so deep and rich in you that nothing can move you. I mean, that's what 
I see that need to be more stronger. I think if I if, if I share anything with anyone, I'm always asking them, how much time do you spend in the Word? Are you in the Word of God? Are you are you seeking Him day and night? Are you spending that time? You know, when you're taking that walk, or if you're on a trail, I don't care. Put it in your ear. You know, hook it into your bone. I've been passing out the the King James Audio Bible. You know, and listen. Yeah. Are you hearing anything? Is it getting into your heart? Because that's what how strong. That's why it's called a sword. Because when we come to the Lord, our hearts are hard until we come to the Lord, and He breaks that heart, and that word seeps into that heart. You know, He talks about how a vessel has to be smashed. How we got to be smashed, uh, tried like a gold. We got to be smashed. We got to be crushed. You know, and then He's able to build from that. You know, and that's what He's wanting to do. But he's got to get through that. The only thing hard enough to get through that hard is his love for us. And I believe he showed that at the cross, how much he loved us. See, we need, we got a God that came and died for us. And that's what, you know, that's what he wants to do to each and every one of us. It, I told someone today, I said, he's not a respecter of persons. He's not going to say, I'll do it for him, but I'm not going to do it for you. No, he's not a respecter of persons. We have not because he said we ask not. Right? That's right. So we need to ask him, if you don't have that fellowship or you don't have, you don't, the Holy Ghost is not a feeling, F-E-E-L-I-N-G, it's a feeling, F-I-L-L-I-N-G. He said, ask him. He said to ask him. He wants to fill you. He wants his spirit to teach you his word, to teach you his word so you don't, and you know what? It says, it says you need not any man to teach you if you have the anointing. And, and right. you know, even the disciples, Brother Ricky, Mike, even the disciples, didn't he not tell them to go in and into the Jerusalem until they'd been empowered from on high? They went up to yeah. the upper room and they were to wait there until what? Until the Holy Ghost fell upon them. Then what happened? They began to prophesy and everybody heard them in their own language. You know, yeah. that's where the word of God can be spread out through the whole world. That's why he told us go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth shall be uh, baptized, right? Mm -hmm. And he that believeth not shall be damned. Is yeah. that right? Damned. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what we got to understand here is that it's it's so important. You know, it makes me think of uh, y'all got to help me with this one. I remember the story of eunuch, the eunuch that was riding along, and, and the Lord sent Philip yeah. by the Spirit. Remember? And yep. he was yeah, reading the book of Isaiah, and he didn't understand it. And Philip joined him up in the chariot, and he asked, who am I, who, who is this? He was asking who this was. He wanted to know who this was about. And that's when he shared Jesus with him. Yes. And the woman immediately said, what, here is water. What for business to be baptized? Both of them got down, he baptized, and then the Holy Spirit led Philip somewhere else. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Did I get that right? Yeah. You know, stop and think about that right there. My goodness, I mean, we'd be led by the Spirit. Can you imagine what we would what would happen? The way it would explode God's word if we would just be led by his spirit to to share the gospel with every person you come in contact with. You know, yes. no and that's what I tell so many people, you know, when I when I was doing doing nursing, you know, there there was so, they were so frail, so frail. And they would say, I don't know what to do. I can't do anything. I love the Lord, but I don't know what to do. I said, you can pray. Amen. Can pray. And they said, you know, one of them told me, well, my sister used to tell me that. And I said, well, honey, I'll be your prayer buddy. And you pray. Everybody that comes to this room, you pray for them. Pray for them. The Lord will send them in and you pray for them. And she couldn't move by herself. She had to be lifted, oriented, everything. But guess what? And when it came to her room, she'd pray for them. You know? Wonderful. God always has a way. Jesus is that way. And Jesus, he said, didn't David, I just read that, I think yesterday, uh, didn't David said, uh, even if I make my bed to hell, God is there? God is there. Well, go ahead, Brother Ricky. Well, you know, that this is this is where we're, we're living at. And, and um, you know, what you said a while ago is so true. Jesus said that he was going to send a comforter. He right. said that he was in the comforter, and mm -hmm. and that it can lead us and guide us into all truth. And look at the day. You know what is so great 
with their day to day compared to what they was back then, they didn't have a Bible in one book that they could open up and read out of. They didn't have that. We got the whole Word of God in one book that we can read out of and we can understand. I believe that that's why that the Bible speaks of that there will be no excuse in this day and time. You want, to know about the, you want to know about the Holy Ghost? It's in the Word of God. Amen. You want to know? You want to know who Jesus really is? It's in the Word of God. Amen. You want salvation? It's in the Word of God. Amen. You want to know about the tribulation period? It's in the Word of God. It's all there. It from Genesis one to Revelation twenty two. It's all for whosoever will. That's right. You, you know, you know, you, you know it, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing that, you know, you know, it's been a while since we've done any type of, of radio like that because, you know, we've had things going on. We've had our Job experiences. <laughs> That's what I yeah. call them, our Job experiences for sure. And, you know, but, the, but we come together as if it never stopped. You know what I mean? We're still speaking the same thing. We're still sharing the same thing because we have the same spirit. See, that's what people understand. There's only one God. There's only one spirit. There's only one church, right? Only one. Yeah. And, and it's the body. And, you know, let him empower you. He wants to empower us from on high. He wants to give us his spirit. Like you said, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. He's told you who the comforter was that it's him and he wants to comfort you and people are you know living their life and they have faith one day and then they're down the next and they're upset and then they're happy and then when everything's going well then when everything goes bad he's the same god of the mountain as he is the valley he's yes. the uncomfortable god he's the same yesterday today and forever he yes. doesn't change and that's what we got to understand. And that's what we want to share with y'all to give y'all hope, to encourage you. You want to be on fire for God? Get into his word. Get on them knees. Get into that word. Ask God. You say, hey, I'm going to be honest with you. I couldn't read very well many years ago when I came to the Lord. And I would be like, Lord, I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. Now I can say I understand because I have the word in me. And I, but I continue, it's not some, but if I get away from it, guess what? I start forgetting. You got to stay in there. You got to keep it primed. You got to keep it, you know, you know, you got to keep that word constantly in you. And, you know, this is what is so important right now with the times that we're seeing in. Christians do not retire. No. We endure till the end, till our last breath. We Man. don't know when that's going to be, but we know we're to endure till the end. We, we need to be encouraging each other. We need to be lifting each other up. Any of us here, all three of us are admins here. We've been, we've been doing this for quite some time. We don't have all the answers, but I'll tell you one thing. If you want prayer, if you want to ask any questions, we first tell you take it to him. Talk to him to Jesus we're talking about. Look, he'll give you the answer through his word. If you need help, we promise you one thing we will do. We'll give you the word of God. Amen. It won't be our answers. It'll be his. Because Amen. that will stand forever. And that's Amen. what we're going to lead you to and point you to is to Jesus and his word. If you want to visit our website, you can at www.posttribnetwork.org. Mm -hmm. And you're welcome to visit there. There's nothing but Bible studies on there of everything we've been talking about, the Godhead, the, the post you know, uh, going through the tribulation. It's all scripture. It's all scripture. Go there and look at it. Open up your Bibles and look. Mm -hmm. Check it out. Whatever anyone says, is it in the word? Look it up for yourself. Get that word in you. And that's what we want to do. Hopefully we can maybe start doing this, you know, every week or every couple of weeks or something. And then maybe we'll do a night. If y'all want to come in the chat and ask questions, one at a time, ask questions. We'll give you the word of God. Amen. Brother Ricky, what else you want to share? Well, I just want to encourage everybody that if you're listening to this, if you're listening to this, to what we're talking about today, and, and you're saying, I want to know more. We done said, talk to Jesus. 
Mm -hmm. Allow him to come and rule and reign in your life. You know, the disciples, whenever they started preaching this on the day of Pentecost, they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? Mm -hmm. said, We're I this, and, 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 and Peter said unto them, repent. Be that mm -hmm. to every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, for you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the Amen. promise. Now, here's the key. The promise is unto you and your children and whosoever the Lord thy God shall call. So don't let, don't let nobody tell you it's not for you. It's for you, my friends. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Uh, Tell you, I'm going to remind y'all, November 4th of this year, we are going to be doing a live show to celebrate our 23rd year, mm -hmm. our 23rd year in the ministry. Um, and we're going to be doing a, a show called What is This World Coming To? Yes. And we think that's going to be something that's going to be very, you know, Lord willing. We don't know what's going to happen between now and then, but that's what the plans are, but Lord willing. But we're going to try to get on here more often and be able to share. You may see Brother Ricky, you may see Brother Mike, you may see me. And we're each, we got, you know, the reels too. You know, Ricky, you want to jump on there with the real thing? I think it's like 60 seconds if you want to just share a short little message, something like that, a minute long. I think it does short ones like they're trying to imitate another deal, but you know what we're doing. Or we get on here live. You know, this is what we want to do because we want to be able to share with y'all. Some of y'all have been in this group for, for years and haven't said anything. Some of you are starting to speak up. Some of you are starting to share. And, and we welcome that. We do welcome that. We're not acting like we don't. We do. But, you know, we're just, we're just wanting to point people to Jesus and his word. That's all we want to do. That's all we've ever wanted to do. And that has not changed in all these years. And it won't. Mike? Yeah. Careful of the button there. You can hit it. Got it? Yeah. Okay. So, and also, uh, Ren brought up uh, that uh, our group, we do King James Version only. Mm -hmm. But I just want to make this clear this is what we do here okay we do king james version we've all been brought up in it and it's easier for us to understand however as as reasoning together with others who understand other versions i'm not judging them what i'm doing in my life is i'm trying to reason together to break bread with my brethren all around so when i hear them speaking those other versions, I have to quickly be studied in the Word of God as well. In my King James mind, I can understand what you're talking about. So if I, you know, you can use that in the group. And though, but yeah. in the group, mm -hmm. in the in the Post Truth Network group, we're King James version only. You know, and so it's just because we understand that as the admins of the group, as overseers of the group. But and that's the word God. And and that's what we believe on that. But outside of the group is hey, I'm trying to reason together so I'm under trying to understand what everybody's coming from, trying to break bread because some don't read the King James Version. Cool. See what I'm saying? Some might and I don't understand all these versions, but I I hear it when I read it, I hear it in my in my heart, I hear it in my head. I hear the King James version. So, if somebody, well, we go look it up. Yeah, or we have to go look it up so we can. Well, there's a reason it. for that, you know, because of all the, you know, you know, you got to bring that out and like we'll throw it out there. Why too? We went and studied when we were very young in the Lord. We went and studied other versions, and I'm sure Ricky has too. I can't speak for him; he'll speak for himself. And when I discovered that. Uh, the NIV, a New American Standard, Amplified Bible, all these newer versions, I began to find out that they were uh, the, uh, the Catholics. Years ago, the Catholics used to have the Bible where you'd have to go to a priest to hear the word. Yeah. And they had it strapped shut, chained, and you couldn't hear it. Well, King James didn't believe that. He thought you ought to have the right to have the word of God and we read it for ourselves. So he went and had it translated uh, from the original into what we know as English today in order for us to be able to read it. So this is why we stick forward to this. Catholics did not like, and I'm just being honest here, you go look it up. 
they did not like the King James, did not like that King James had done that. So what they did was they began to bring other translations in, the NIV, the New American Standard, the Amplified Bible, so on and so forth. I got to look at a mock because I wanted to know why we got so many translations. And I was young in the Lord, and I was just like, what is this? Well, I ended up finding out that they were done by a publishing company named uh, called Zondervan. Zondervan owns HarperCollins. HarperCollins Publishing also wrote the Satanic Bible. And I was like, now wait a minute, why is the same publisher that wrote the Satanic Bible writing all these other translations too? That's what led me to the King James when I continued in the King James all these years. Because I began to see Zondervan, it's called Z-O-N-D-E-R-B-A-N. They bought out HarperCollins. HarperCollins publishes the Satanic Bible. And I'm sitting there thinking, now, wait a minute. Why is one doing the Satanic Bible, one doing the NIB and the New American Standard, so on and so forth? And I don't think that we as Christians, I know, not think, I know that we as Christians, I ain't touching anything that does the Satanic Bible, the book of Satan. Me neither. And that's why we stick with the King James. Mm -hmm. Like Mike said, we know there's other people that are used to, he has friends on his, they'll use different terms. We go and look it up, that verse in the King James, and see what it says. And there's some of them that's been posted that's been way out there. I mean, right down, raunchy and nasty. And we were just like, where in the world is that in Scripture? And then we go and we look it up, and like, it doesn't even say that. Uh, they also omitted a bunch of verses that's completely missing. You can't even find them in the NIB or the New American Standard. Amplified, and I can go on on the Message Bible. I can give you a list of at least 20 or more of them. But this is why we stick with the King James, and that's why we ask the group to respect that we stick with the King James. Yeah. Let me see. So. Yeah, it also helps. It also helps. Uh, oh, I did something wrong. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, hold on a minute. Oops. I hit a button. He hit a button. Hold on, sorry. <laughs> so you know, you know what? You, you you're gonna have to go look this stuff up yourself. That's yeah, what's that's most what important. Okay, say. so what you gonna say? Yeah, no, just you go up. look it up. Look it up. You go look for yourself. We did. It helps us. Rick, Rick, Ricky. I know Mike's done. I know I've done it. Uh, we went. Uh, Ricky. He knew this. He already knew about it too. So I mean, yeah. I mean, go look it up for yourself so you know without hitting a button yeah yeah so yeah it actually it helps us study <laughs> it gets us digging you know, the scriptures so I, I just dig in the scriptures even more yeah. so yeah. you know because i've sat in churches before and i felt really stupid <laughs> <laughs> and really ignorant you know i'm just like what are you talking about you know well that's why we put in our so, deal that god's not the author computer so i have to i have so i have to write down stuff mm -hmm. you, you know you and then I go home and I would look it up in, in scripture and I said, ah, oh, okay, I get it. So right. anyway, our battery's about to die. So uh, here's Ren again. Yeah, well, well, thank you so much for y'all listening and everything. Hey, you know, we've been doing this a long time together. Some of us have lost a little bit more hair. No offense, Ricky. Some of us lost more teeth. No offense, Ren. <laughs> But you know what? We're still here. We're still preaching. We're sharing, still sharing the good news. Love Jesus. Love others. Get into the Word, and the Word will get into you. God bless everybody. Amen.